So on the concept of lists, let's do a new file, new script. I'm going to just call this one turtle list. And what I want to be able to do, what we're going to work for, is to come up with something like this. Commands are equal to forward, comma, left, comma, forward, comma, right. Although that's pretty boring because it's not describing the direction that it's going to go. So we need to make it a little bit better than that. Like maybe forward 90 pixels, left 45 degrees, forward 80 pixels, you know, right 70 degrees, that kind of thing, you know. And then the turtle would follow those commands. So we're going to need some kind of function that will take one of these commands and do it. We're just going to call it Simon Says. But first, we need to make our turtle. So import turtle, lowercase t. Bless you. Bless you. t is equal to turtle, lowercase t, with a capital T, like that. Define. DEF Simon says, we're telling the turtle what to do. And I'm just going to make the, uh, the name of the command S. It doesn't have to be really complicated. So, if we're passed in a command, you don't have to type this uh, in, but if we're passed in a command in the form of a letter and a number, we need to get that F out so that we can do ifs on it, and we need to get that number out so that we can, you know, turn it into an integer and go forward that many pixels. So we've talked, I think, if you have a string like this, don't type this, name is equal to Billy, how do you get that B out of it? What position is that? Zero. That's at zero. And then if you wanted to get the rest of this string, is there a way to do that? You use slicing, and you start at position one, and you use a colon, and you don't even specify the last position. That would get all the rest of it. So let's do that. Let's say that the command is equal to S0. That'll get the first one. And the value is equal to s, a slice starting at 1 and going all the way to the end. So that gets the first character, and this gets all the rest. Now just to test it out, we're going to implement only one command, which is f. If command is equal equal to f, t dot forward, whoops, we need to turn that value into a number. Unfortunately, there may really not be a value. What if it was just something like that? Sure, all of these commands have values, but what if we extended our vocabulary so that it could lift the pin up? Well, you don't pass in a number to the pin up, or a begin fill, or an end fill. So... What we need to do is, if there really is a value, we need to convert it to an integer. But if there's not, if the length of it is zero, then it's not going to be. So let's do this. If the len of value is greater than zero, that means that there's really data in it.
So we're going to make value equal to the integer version of the value. Else, we're just going to set value equal to zero so that we don't crash if we reference it somehow. Value is equal to zero. All right, now we're ready. If the command is equal to F, hey, get back up there. Then T dot forward value pixels. Else colon print command comma not recognized. We just got to tell them that that's not implemented yet. Right now, we only have one command implemented, the F command. So let's try it out. Let's call Simon Says, go down to the bottom, and let's make it go forward 200 pixels. And if the thing draws a line for 200 pixels, great. I think it worked. Let's add more commands. I want to make sure everybody gets this far first. But you can probably do the rest yourself. If command equals L, T dot left value. If command equals right, T dot right value. You know, that way you can go left, right, forward. And if command is equal to B, go back. T dot back value. You can implement those three while I'm running around, making sure that people are doing good. So, what ways do you want us to go? Just like the, on where the list was? Yeah, let's, let's add a second. Okay. If this part works, if it's drawing, then we're going to add some more commands in. So we're going to go, I'll, I'll do left. L if command is equal to left, t dot left value. And then you can tack on more LFs before that final else. If command equals right, turn right. And then you have to come down here to that Simon Says call and test those out. Simon Says right 90. Simon Says left you know, 45, that kind of stuff. We've just got syntax errors. Bugs they wish exterminated. Okay. commands have we used besides left and right and stuff like that we did cut we've done color but color is a string I want to kind of ignore that one for now sorry just because we don't know how to deal with that string yet I haven't thought of a way um, so I need to catch up L if command is equal to right T dot right value L if command equals B T dot back value and we did pin up and pin down I'm not sure I guess U could mean up and D could mean down those won't even use a value I want to make sure before I have you type this, I get the syntax exactly right. Pin up Python. <coughs> okay, it is pin up with no spaces. I mean, with no underscores. Okay, so lf command equals u t dot pin up. LF command is equal to D. T dot pin down. Oops, get rid of that value. I'm sorry. Don't type that. That was a mistake. 
It's just pin up or pin down. It doesn't take a number. So Kathy had a great suggestion to get color to work. The only problem with that is that color isn't a number, and we're, we're trying to turn it into a number there. So I haven't thought of a way to around that yet. Yeah, we could have a, a list of colors. That'd be pretty cool. I think we'll still leave that alone for now. I'll be right there. Right, we could pass in three integers, the RGB values. All right, I added all those commands in, and I never added anything else to Simon Says, so it's not doing anything else. Let me scroll down here and do that. So Simon Says, lift your pin up. Then Simon Says, turn right, 90. Simon Says, what happens if you do it without saying Simon Says, you don't do it. Forward. 200 and then let's put the pin back down so Simon, I'm just making these up it's not going to draw anything nice Simon says put the pin back down and then I don't know turn right and go 200 again Simon says right 90 and lastly Simon says forward 200 so if this works, he'll go 200, he'll turn, he'll lift his pin up so there won't be any line, he'll go another 200, we'll put the pin back down and we'll go another 200. So there should be a blank line involved here. Yeah. Okay, calling Simon Says a million times is annoying. We actually want to make it work like that, where we can just create a list of commands. So we need a name of another function that we can feed a list. I'm not coming up with a great one. What if for colors we did something like this? Don't type this. But what if the color was specified something like that? Some special symbol there that meant that the next thing to follow is a string rather than a number. We could try that, but let's implement the list first. What could be the name, I, and I don't have a good one in mind, for a function that tells si Simon to actually do a list of commands rather than just one? I guess just Simon does list. I'm not coming up with a great one. So, DEF Simon List, capital L for list. Oh, I'm sorry. You were asking for help and I ignored you. Oh, that's right, that's right. You're suggesting the Okay. So, the list of commands that we're passing. How can we step through the list of commands? We can use a while loop, but I'd like to use a for loop. The syntax is easier. We've done that, right? How do we use a for loop? We do something like this. For command in L, do Simon says on that command. And then instead of all these Simon Soses, we could delete those and just do Simon List and pass those commands to it. All right, that's a boring series of commands, but it works. 
I want to make a draw triangle. Modify your commands to draw a triangle. That's the first little thought puzzle while I wander around and make sure everything's compiling. So what are the angles of a triangle? I mean, if it's a perfect triangle, isosceles or whatever they call them. That's a good question. I think it's 120 degrees. So forward 90, left 120, forward 90, left 120. And you probably used your own links. That's fine. You may have turned right rather than turning left. That's fine. Forward 90. Whoops. That's really enough, but if we want to turn back the original way we were going, one more turn would do it. I do want us to implement a color command just because it'd be fun. So at the beginning of your commands list, do C colon blue, something like that. So what our code is going to do is to check to see if the value begins with a colon. And if it does, then value is going to be a string rather than an integer. So we're going to go make that change, and then we'll come back down here to eyeball this. So here is where we need to fix it. How do we check to see if the next character is a colon or not? Well, the value, it actually becomes the first character of the value. So it's, again, going to be 0. If value 0 equals a colon, then we're going to set value equal to the rest of the string, everything following the colon, all the way to the end. Else, we're just going to do this uh, int thing. We're going to assume it's a number. And then we need to tack on a color command. So I'm doing it right here under that F so that it's all on the same screen. These are the changes that we just made. I added that line, that line, and that line. And then this one got indented one more. So here, after if command is equal to F, let's do LF command is equal to C t.color value. Hmm. Oops. What's my typo there? Two equals. <coughs> Alrighty, a blue drew a blue triangle. So, can you think of any more commands to add to it? I can think of speed, but we're not drawing so much that the speed really cares. Anything fill. else? Fill. fill. Begin fill and end fill. Now, we've already used B for back. We could get rid of back because... If you go forward a negative value, it's the same as going back. So let's use B for begin fill and then E for end fill. 
So I'm going to change this one. I don't want to go back anymore if it's a B. Instead, I want to go t.begin underscore fill. So that's changed and that's changed. I'm going to remove these comments here. And then let's do LF command is equal to E. That'll stand for end fill. Be nice if we actually made these words, you know, rather than just single letters, because you'd run out of letters. L of command is equal to E T dot end underscore fill. I didn't change my data to do a begin and end fill, so that didn't help, but I'll do that. So my very first command is going to be a B, quote B, quote. And then my very last command is going to be an E to end my fill. Now you can't see all that because it's scrolled too far. Just know that there's a quote E quote at the end of our commands. Neat. All right, now draw a teddy bear like that. Nah. The only other thing that I think would make this super duper awesome would be to allow setting both the fill color and the pin color. Right now we're only we're setting both at the same time because the color parameter, if you only send in one, sets both. But if you send in two, it specifies the line color and the fill. I don't want to do that. And then the other thing that would be cool is if we implemented that go to command that the uh, that the teddy bear program used, so that you could go to a specific place. But that would re also require two parameters, and right now this is just set up for reading one, and we would have to make s some changes I'm not ready to make. So I think this program is pretty much done. I should have left some commands for y'all to implement yourself, but and call it homework, but I'm not coming up with any. Alrighty, so let's go back and talk about lists. You could save this and upload it to Dropbox R, I believe it is. Simon says turtle. So I'm going to make a new file. This is just going to involve more lists. So I'm going to do a save as... We need to give it a good name. I don't know. April 4 lists. That's a clever name. Name, date. April 4 lists. All right, say I want to make a list of student names. How do I define an, a list of names? We have to give a variable name. I guess I'm just going to call it names. That's real clever. And then equals, and let's say I want four names. So what do I do after that? Well, how do we define our commands? Come on, guys, how did we define our commands? We had cmds equals to, and then what came after that? Yeah, the square brackets. And inside the square brackets, let's put some name names. Let's see, our students are named Tony Stark, Darth Vader. We have some bad students. Maybe only three. <coughs> and Harry Potter. Genius students. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So if we want to print those names out with a for loop, we've kind of seen already how to do that. For s, and I'm just using s to mean string, you could call it anything you wanted to. For s and names, print s, those would print out those three names. 
What if I only wanted to print out Darth Vader? How would I print that out rather than printing them all? What would I do if I wanted to print out just Darth Vader? I could type names and then I need to add something to that to specify that position. Yeah, we could use a slice or just, yep, yep, like that. But we're only going to put one number in rather than two numbers and a colon. So this is position what? This is zero, so that's one. Yep, yep, you got it. We really didn't need to print Darth Vader's name twice. That's all right. I'm not even sure we need to print them once like that. Now there's the concept of parallel arrays. That sounds complicated, but it's really not. What if you made another array called scores? And in this class, Tony Stark made an A. Darth Vader flunked because he was a bit rebellious. And I don't know what Harry Potter did. He made a C because Hermione wasn't there to help. Now we can print out the name followed by the grade. Unfortunately, we can't do it with a super duper easy loop like that. We have to have some kind of counter. Why? Because we need to reference names, square brackets, zero, and scores, square brackets, zero. And I'll show you what I mean. Let's add a print statement that would print names, square brackets, zero, plus, no, wait, we can't do that, comma, earned, and, <coughs> or, A-N isn't going to work like if it's the word D or B or C. That's, oh well. Earned a score, a grade of, there, that gets rid of that. Scores, zero. There we go. Tony Stark earned a grade of A. If we wanted to print out the next two, you could copy and paste those. You can get the idea, though, that we're going to replace this with a loop. And print out names 1 and scores 1. And then print out names 2 and scores 2. Let's see if that lists all three of them. Tony made an A, Vader made an F, Potter made a C. All right, that's working. So why are these called parallel arrays? Because they are arrays of the same length where the data is thematically tied together by the index number. Name zero is Tony. Score zero is A. So those are linked together. Tony made an A. Name one. Vader, score one is F, so Vader made an F. And Potter is index two, so he's name two, and his score is score two. I hope you see that. Now, how would we write a for loop that counted zero, one, and two? We would use a for. We could also use a while, but I'm trying to wean us off of whiles. For, and let's pick a counter name. I, X, C, whatever. For X in range, let's pick the starting point. What's our starting number? Right there. Zero. And we want to go up to, but not including. So that means we actually have to go one past it. If we do two, it's only going to go zero and one. It's a weird thing. So we have to make it three. I wish it wasn't that way. Print names subscript X. You don't have to put that big space there. Earned a grade of comma Scores subscript X.
that should just print the same data twice. Tony Darth Vader Harry, Tony Darth Vader Harry. So since it's printing it twice, why don't we comment these out? Just hashtag those out of there. So this loop is showing kind of a for each syntax. Some languages actually use the word each. For every string in names, for each string in names, print that out. That's great and all that, but it doesn't let you go through a parallel array. The reason why is to do a parallel array, you have to have the index numbers so that you can tie them together. So instead, we used a for loop, we used a range for loop, which it iterated a counter, x being our counter. Now, if you have a range statement, you don't have to specify the starting and the ending position. If you delete the first number, if you only have one number, then it assumes that's the end. So that syntax looks a little bit clearer. I don't mind putting 0, 3 there. Another thing that would be interesting is that this code will break if we delete one of the people. I'm going to delete Harry Potter temporarily, just, just to show you. And it blows up. The reason why is X got too high. We only had two names here. Which, that's name zero, right? That's name one. So it should not have tried to print out two. So instead of printing three, we should do LEN of the names array. That gets the number of items in this list. So X is still at least smart enough to know how many names or... It is now, right. Now that we've added that, it counts the number of names and only goes up to that. Well, it blew up when you took out one of the names, so I guess it still kind of understands that it's not jiving. <laughs> the amount of names. Is right. Not when we had this three, when we had this here as three, what happened was is uh, this counter X went from zero, one, and two. Zero worked great. Tony Stark one worked great. It printed out Darth Vader, and then when it tried to print out names two. There is no names to. So that's why it crashed. So instead, we want to make sure that X only goes to 0 and 1, which is means that we want to base it on the length of the names list. So that's why we're going to do length of names. Now, I've kind of monkeyed with this syntax enough that I'm worried that we've kind of left the point behind. But that is the correct way to step through an array. You don't know in advance, I called it an array, I'm sorry, a list. Other languages call them arrays. You don't know in advance how many items are in that list, or usually you don't. That's why you typically do that. And this syntax is getting nasty enough that I do want to get rid of the zero. There we go. Why? Because if I have to type a whole bunch of complex stuff there, I'd rather make it marginally easier to remember if that makes sense. It's already calling for zero anyway, right? Right, exactly. If you only have one number, it assumes you're starting at zero. Let's play with for loops for a minute. For A in range 10, print A. What numbers is that going to print? Zero, one, two, three, four, five. Where's it going to stop? Nine. Nine, right. What about this one? You can reuse the same variable name all you want. As long as it's part, of, just part of a loop like that. For A in range... Can, can I spell? 10, comma, 20. We've got O-M instead of I-N. O-M. Here we go. Thanks. Print A. And we all understand that that variable's name is meaningless. I could call this Fred as long as that one matched. Don't make that change. But this is just a temporary variable that holds each value in the list in turn. 
So what's this one going to print? It's going to start at what? It's going to start at 10 and it's going to count up to what? Right. So this got gave us 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Or I should just say 0 through 9. This gave us 10 through 19. What if we want to go backwards? For A in range, now I'm actually not sure if this is going to work. I wanted to start at 20 and then go back down to 1. So this is an experiment. If you specify a third value, it, it controls how it increases or decreases. These are a therm, assuming a third value of 1. They're going up by 1 each time. If we made it a 2, it'd go up by 2 each time. Tell you what, let's make this better. Rather than um, go backwards, because that's a weirder concept, let's go to tw from 20 to 41, so it, in it, will, it will include 40. But we want to count by 5s. So that will print out 20, 25, 30, 35, and 40. Why did I make this one 41? Because I want it to be, you know, same reason we made this 20 when we want to get it to count up to 19. I tried it the other way anyway. It told me invalid was the, that negative 1 that we had up there first. Okay. Oh, I forgot to print. I forgot my colon, too. Here we go. I always feel like making a joke when I say that. I'm not gonna. Here we go. So 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. I want to try that experiment now, counting down. For A in range, 10, comma, 0, comma, negative 1. What is what? I wonder what that does. You said it didn't work. I believe you. Okay, it counted 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and it stopped before it hit 0. That's annoying. That means that if I want it to get to 0, I have to type in negative 1 there. 10 to 0 by negative 1s, you know, by 1s. So the first number is the starting point. The second number is 1 past the end point. And then the third number is the number that you want to add or subtract. So your homework. We're not going to do anything with the idea of parallel arrays in this homework. We're going to re-hit parallel arrays on um, Thursday. What I want, I'm going to just type three colons so that I can make the homework assignment. Write a for loop that will print the numbers 0 through 20, all of them. Write a for loop that count prints the numbers 100 through 110. Write a for loop that prints the numbers 200 through 1,000 by 100s, increasing by 100s each time. So in other words, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 900, 1,000. Then lastly, same idea as the movie list. I'm kind of running out of things. Names, movie list, books, car brands. Make a list. No, songs. Named songs. 
example, songs is equal to, these are my songs. <laughs> Make your own. Alrighty. You know, songs like We Will Rock You and whatever else. That's not the correct syntax, obviously. Write a 4S in songs loop that prints the songs out. One per line. And then write a 4X in range loop. That prints the songs out. One per line. All right, that's the homework. Pardon? More than one. <laughs> you don't have to go nuts. Four, five, six, whatever. Open the Billboard page and read in all of the songs that are in the top 20. Nah. That'd be a neat project. Alright, so we're done for today which means we're getting out 10 minutes early. If you felt like working on this right now, you might be able to get it done before you left for the day. Or, you know, bail. Go ahead and I'll see you on Thursday. You may as well upload this script as well, in my opinion, just so that you have it at your fingertips in the submissions. But I'll also paste it in the notes. Remember to terminate your comment with three quotes if you did the same thing as I did and open your comments like that just to get it to be the correct syntax.